have the agenda review session. We have ordinances on second reading. Number one, we have to amend and supplement revised our ordinances of the City of New Brunswick, Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic, Chapter 1020, Handicap Parking Section 102010, Schedule 39, Parking Zones for Handicapped Persons, adding 49 Duke Street and 53 Paul Boulevard. We have ordinances on first reading. Number one, an ordinance to establish an open space trust fund in the City of New Brunswick. Number two, an ordinance to amend and supplement the advisory ordinances of the City of New Brunswick. Title two, Administration and Personnel, Chapter 2.44, Department of Engineering and Public Works, Section 2.4420, E Division of Engineering, regarding fees for land use procedures. And number three, an ordinance to amend and supplement the advisory ordinances of the City of New Brunswick. Title three, Revenue and Finance, Chapter 328, Fee Schedule, Section 328090, Fees for Land Use Procedures. Adding engineering resolution compliance review. Number four, an ordinance amending ordinance 0-0127802, fixing salaries and wages of various employees represented by the Municipal Employees Association for January 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2022. Five, an ordinance to amend supplementary revised ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Title II, Administration and Personnel, Chapter 2.08. City Council, Section 2.08210, Redevelopment Project. We have resolutions. Number one, approve agenda amendments. Two, approve payroll 12-21-19 to 1-3-20. Three, authorize refund for redeemed tax sales certificates. Four, authorize establishment of petty cash accounts for various departments. Number five, authorize extension of contract with Wellness Coaches USA for health and injury prevention services of the City of Brunswick employees. Six-month period commencing January 1st, 2020. And ending June 30th, 2020, not to exceed $23,000 non pro tonk. Six, authorized professional service agreement with Charlie Gay, Esquire, for Assistant City Attorney, PSA for 2020, not to exceed $30,000 fair and open. Seven, authorized professional service agreement with Warner Law Group, LLP, for a 2020 Labor Council, not to exceed $25,000 fair and open. Number eight, authorized professional service agreement with Coleman Law Group, and Dustin Dukas, LLP, the 2020 Special Counsel for Tax Appeals Division of Assessment, not to exceed $55,000, fair and open. Nine, authorized professional service agreement with the Francesco, Bateman, Kunzman, Davis, Lara, and Long, PC, for 2020 Special Counsel for Tax Appeals, Conflicts Division of Assessment, not to exceed $12,500, fair and open. Number 10, authorized professional service agreement with BRB Valuation and Consulting Services, for 2020 Real Property Appraisal Services, for Tax Appeals, Division of Assessments, not to exceed $35,000, fair and open. Number 11, Authorized Professional Service Agreement with Appraisal Systems Incorporated for 2020 Property Inspection Services for Added Assessments, Division of Assessments, not to exceed $12,500, fair and open. 12, Authorized Professional Service Agreement with Civil Solutions, the Division of Adams, Greenman, and Hagen Associates Incorporated for 2020 Tax Map Maintenance and GIS Maintenance Services, Division of Assessments, not to exceed $20,000, fair and open. 13, authorized professional service agreement with Spatial Data Logic Incorporated for 2020 maintenance and support services for municipal software, GIS program, division of assessments, not to exceed $55,000, fair and open. 14, authorized professional service agreement with Vital Communications Incorporated for 2020 tax assessment computer program and technical support associated printing, binding, and mailing services, division of assessments, not to exceed $22,500, Fair and open. Number 15, authorized professional service agreement with InSync Municipal Services doing business as First Bike Corporation for 2020 tax water and sewer billing and collection of software maintenance and support services not to exceed $95,000, fair and open. 16, authorized professional service agreement with Mott McDonald Group Incorporated doing business as Mott McDonald LLC for 2020 engineering and support services for the Woodview Utility not to exceed $225,000, fair and open. 17, approved resolution establishing two temporary handicapped parking spaces, not to exceed 180 days, location Baldwin Street. 18, authorized professional service agreement with Willens, Goldman, Spitzer, PA, for a 2020 bond council, not to exceed $50,000, fair and open. 19, authorized professional service agreement with Samuel Klein and Company for the 2020 municipal auditor, not to exceed $141,240, fair and open. 20, authorized professional service agreement with Phoenix Advisors LLC for 2020 continuing disclosure agent services as required by the Securities Exchange Commission. 12-month period commencing January 1st, 2020 
and ending December 31st, 2020, not to exceed $15,000, not for 21, authorized professional service agreement with Bridgewater Veterinary Hospital for veterinary services for the K-9 unit, Odin and Goose for the police department. 12-month period commencing January 1st, 2020, ending December 31st, 2020, not to exceed $8,900, not pro tom. 22, authorized professional service agreement with Robert Wood Johnson Physician Enterprise, PA, for 2020 physician services not to exceed $44,500, fair and open. 23, authorized execution of Municipal Employees Association, MBA contract local 108, term January 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2022. 24, approve agreement for the use of $60,000 of CDBG funds to the Union County Economic Development Corporation, UCEBC, for assistance to micro enterprises, fair and open. 25, approve award of contract with Nokia Corporation for medium heavy equipment parts and repair services. 24 month period commencing January 21st, 2020 and ending January 20th, 2022. Specification number 807 19 not to exceed $138,000. 26. Approved request for use of city property requested by the Zaki Browser Enrichment Foundation, War Memorial Monument Park, donating coats to the community on Sunday, December 29th, 2019, the rain date of Saturday, January 11th, 2020, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. non pro tonic. 27, approved request for use of city property requested by the Dream Project, location of Jubilee Park Pavilion for kickoff celebration, Saturday, June 13, 2020, time 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. 28, approved award of contract with Nearmap U.S. Incorporated for proprietary software for the tax assessor, not to exceed $15,500. 29, approved award of contract with 72-hour LLC doing business at National Auto Fleet Group, Chevrolet of Watsonville, for two 2020 Chevrolet Equinox for the Division of Fire Prevention and Division of Housing Inspection, not to exceed $49,854.58. Sourcewell Co-op, formerly the National Joint Power Alliance, NJPA. Number 30, approved emergency temporary appropriation for 2020. 31, award professional service agreement to Delaware Rapid Engineering Incorporated. For 2020 engineering review of site plans, variances, subdivisions for planning board and zoning board of adjustment, January 1st, 2020, December 31st, 2020, funded by escrow, fair and open. 32, award professional service agreement to McMenamin, Scotland and Bowman, LLC, for 2020 conflict attorney for the planning board and zoning board of adjustment, January 1st, 2020, December 31st, 2020, funded by escrow, fair and open. 33, award professional service agreement to Big Nail Planning Consultants Incorporated, for 2020 planning review of the site plan, variances, subdivisions for the planning board and zoning board of adjustment, January 1st, 2020, December 31st, 2020, funded by escrow, fair and open. 34, approve amendment resolution R111544, reason to pay copier overage charges of $242.76 for the police department, domestic violence, with RECOA USA Incorporated, not to exceed $242.76. Approval of this amendment will not constitute an increase of 20% or more of the amount of the original contract. 35, authorized award of professional service agreement with Arthur R. Thiebel, Jr. Esquire of the law firm of Ruzi McDermott, Mastro and Murphy, special counsel for year 2020 for the New Brunswick Police Department, not to exceed $15,000, non pro tonic. 36, approval of <coughs> contracts currently delivered by two minutes materials for the Department of Public Works and Water Utility with Stavola Asphalt Company Incorporated for items 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7 not to exceed $76,575, and with Track Rock Industries LLC for items one and six, not to exceed $174,850. Specification number 806-19B. 12 month period, commencing January 19, 2020, and ending January 18, 2021. 37, approved award of contract with Ushray Incorporated Maintenance and Support Contract for Proprietary Software, GIS Development Software Applications for the Division of Assessments, 12 month period commencing September 18, 2020, and ending September 17, 2021, not to exceed $4,000. 38, approve amendment of resolution R011974, to extend the contract for one additional year with the Business and Governmental Insurance Agency, BGIA, for insurance brokerage services prescription program, 12 month period commencing February 2, 2020, and ending February 1, 2021. 39, approved renewal of contract, National Vision Administrators, NVA, for vision plan for city employees, term of January 1st, 2020, December 31st, 2020, not to exceed 49,000 non-proton. 
for the advising consent of the Board of Ethics appointment named Barbara Blackwell expired December 31st, 2023. 41, approved request for use of city property requested by Lincoln Elementary School in front of the Board of Education, Bugalow Park, Pavilion Fields, and Playground, basketball courts and swings. For Lincoln Elementary School Field Day, Thursday, June 11, 2020, the rain date is Tuesday, June 16, 2020, time 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. 42, approved professional service agreement with Power DMS Incorporated for Power Suite subscription for the police department, 12 month period commencing February 23rd, 2020, and ending February 22nd, 2021, not to exceed $6,390. 43, approve award of contract with Gold Type Business Machine doing business at GTBM for proprietary software licenses, 31 InfoCop license renewals, 12 month period commencing January 30th, 2020, and ending January 29th, 2021 not to exceed $8,137.50. 44, authorized authorization to approve lease extension for Damon House, a nonprofit organization at 105 Joyce Gilmer Avenue. 45, authorized purchase by the police department of New Jersey State Approved Co-op 65 MCEC CCPS, the Educational Service Commission of New Jersey Pricing System from Mall Chevrolet Incorporated for one 2020 Chevrolet Tahoe with options, not to exceed $40,117. 52 cents. 46, authorized lease of copy machine for the police department, domestic violence from Recoa USA Incorporated, the one recalled model MP2555 SPG copier system, not to exceed $92.80 per month, commencing February 1st, 2020, and ending January 31st, 2024. 48 month contract, state contract 40467 G-2075 copier maintenance and supply. 47, approve amendment of resolution R011983, one year contract extension with Prime Point LLC for 2020 municipal payroll services, 12 month period commencing January 1st, 2020, and ending December 31st, 2020, specification number 732 19RFP, not to exceed $62,000, fair and open, non pro tum. 48, a, a resolution requesting permission for the dedication by rider for Open Space Trust Fund. 49, a resolution authorizing execution of contract with Community Asset Preservation Corporation for redeveloper services in connection with the abandoned property rehabilitation. 50, approve amendment of resolution R051581, supplemental services number two, with Suburban Consulting Engineers Incorporated for supplemental services for professional engineering services for the relocation of water and sewer main on Charles Street. Specification number 835-13RFP-R, not to exceed $21,905.92. 51, approved amendment of resolution R02940, one year contract extension with Associated Humane Society Incorporated for kennel services for the Division of Animal Control, 12 month period commencing January 1st, 2020, and ending December 31st, 2020. Specification number 723-18RFP. Not to exceed seventy-five thousand dollars, fair and open, not pro ton. I ask for discussion by council and public comments to follow. All right. Here we go. Call the vote. Call the vote, please. Council Member Egan. Here. Council Member Escobar is absent. Council Member Fleming is absent. Council Vice President Sakura Ludwig. Here. Council President Anderson. Here. Please be advised that the notice requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act are complied with and satisfied, and that the annual notice, which gave sufficient notice of the time and place and conduct of all public meetings of the Municipal Council of the City of New Brunswick, has been filed with the City Clerks and placed on the appropriate bulletin board of the lobby of City Hall of New Brunswick, New Jersey, and has been transmitted to the official newspaper of the City of New Brunswick, namely the Home News Review. Please stand if you are able to the pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We can have a moment of silence for our men and women serving in our armed forces, both here and abroad, especially in battle areas, and for all those who have come back hurt, deceased. Thank you. Second. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Vice President Sakura Ludwig. Yes. Council President Anderson. Yes. Report of correspondence by the City Clerk. Yes. 
item one, a letter from HL Petroleum Company, Inc. regarding a biennial certification for remedial action permit at 70 Lipman Drive. Item two, a letter from the NJZEP regarding the April 2019 ISRA semi-annual progress report and the October 2019 ISRA semi-annual progress report. Item three, a letter from the Enviro Sciences of Delaware, Inc. regarding a response action outcome providing documents for seven terminal road. The correspondence will be forwarded to the appropriate departments for further action. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We have no public hearings. We have ordinances on second reading. In ordinance to amend supplementary by the ordinance of the city of New Brunswick, Title 10, Vehicles and Traffic, Chapter 1020, Handicapped Parking, Section 102010, Schedule 39, Parking Zones for Handicapped Persons, adding 49 Duke Street and 53 Paulus Boulevard. Any member from the public who wishes to comment on that, please step up to the mic. Seeing none, move the ordinance. Second. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Vice President Sakura Ludwig. Yes. Council President Anderson. Yes. We have ordinances on first reading. Number one, an ordinance to establish an open space trust fund in the city of New Brunswick. Move the ordinance setting down Wednesday, February 5th, 6.30 p.m., same date to be advertised. Second. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Vice President Sephora Ludwig. Yes. Council President Anderson. Yes. Number two, in order to amend and supplement the advisory ordinances of the City of New Brunswick, Title II, Administration and Personnel, Chapter 244, Department of Engineering and Public Works, Section 24420E, <coughs> Division of Engineering, regarding fees for land use procedures. Move the ordinance setting down Wednesday, February 5th, 6 30 p.m., same date to be advertised. Second. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Vice President Sephora Ludwig. Yes. Council President Anderson. Yes. Number three, in order to amend and supplement the revised ordinance of the City of New Brunswick, Title III, Revenue and Finance, Chapter 328, Fee Schedule, Section 32890, <coughs> Fees for Land Use Procedures, adding Engineering Resolution Compliance Review. Move the ordinance setting down Wednesday, February 5th, 6 30 p.m., same date to be advertised. Second. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Vice President Sephora Ludwig. Yes. Council President Anderson. Yes. Number four, an ordinance amending that ordinance 0127802, fixing salaries and wages of various employees represented by the Municipal Employees Association for January 1st, 2019, December 31st, 2022. Move the ordinance setting down Wednesday, February 5th, 6 30 p.m., same date to be advertised. Second. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Vice President Sephora Ludwig. Yes. Council President Anderson. Yes. Number five, an ordinance to amend and supplement the rise general ordinances of the City of New Brunswick, Title II, Administration and Personnel, Chapter 208, City Council, Section 208-210, Redevelopment Project. Move the ordinance setting down Wednesday, February 5th, 6 30 p.m., same date to be advertised. Second. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Vice President Sephora Ludwig. Yes. Council President Anderson. Yes. We have resolutions 1 through 51. A member from the public would like to talk about any of the resolutions 1 through 51. Please come to the microphone, give your name and address for the record. You have about five minutes, one time up to the one. Good evening, members of the council. Charles Cradivell, resident of New Brunswick, editor of New Brunswick Today, community newspaper here available online, NewBrunswickToday.com. I have eight resolutions I would like to ask you about. First one is uh, ends in 39. Item number six is the professional services agreement for Charlie Gaden. And I just wanted to uh, see if the city is going to continue having two assistant city attorneys. Uh, and uh, if so, when Mr. Catanese's professional service agreement might be up for a vote. I don't know about that one, but this one is for, uh, for Charlie. And it was you know, fair and open, so. Great. Great. And so, uh, is the city going to have a, an additional assistant city attorney, or is Mr. Catney's done? I don't know. This, I don't think it's going to be additional to Charlie's you know, video before, so that's one of them. If Mr. Catney's comes up, that'll be at that time. And when would that be? I don't know when it's up. Mr. Catney's is a sound part time employee. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't have a manager. Oh, really? He's, he's, he's on the payroll. He, he's an employee with benefits? Or no, no benefits. Okay. He 
makes he makes uh, the salary and he doesn't bill by the hour. This is for Miss Gabe to bill litigation over and up up side. to thirty. Correct. And uh, just uh, do you know Mr. Kenny's salary offhand? Thirty-two thousand dollars a year. Something like that. Okay. Don't quote me. Thank you. I'll, I'll move on. Uh, Ending in 41 at the top of page 3, item 8, uh, the tax appeals. And so this is something I've asked about before because I'm hearing that there were a ton of tax appeals after this reval, which is now really two years ago. And I'm, uh, I'm concerned as to the slow pace of the resolution of these tax appeals because, of course, the city if the city loses, they're on the hook for what's already been overpaid by the, 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 the person there. So maybe I'd like to hear from Councilman Egan, if possible, on what's the, why is there such a backlog of tax appeals and why is it costing us so much? Maybe Mr. Shane? I, I, I don't get involved in the city budgets. I refuse myself. But doing a reval, this is all this is all part of doing a reval, but everything else you see here are all part of the systems in the, in the uh, equipment that we need to do our assessing. So all these things are things we've had forever. Do you need vital, you need all these systems. When you do a reval, Mr. DeShane, from what I understand, is doing an excellent job representing the city of New Brunswick because he's there fighting for what he believes, you know, we, he thinks is fair as far as the property value. And sometimes you have to take that to another, you know, you have to you know, you know, take that to another level. I'll let him talk about it, I'm sorry. Uh, the last time I counted, we had about 600 cases pending in the tax court. And the tax court um, typically takes two to three years to schedule one trial. So God knows how long it'll actually take to, to hear all of these cases. One of the issues that we had is uh, the, the judge that was assigned to New Brunswick's cases, um, the, the, the tax court did some reorganization and they reassigned all of our cases to another judge. And that process took an entire year of, of where nothing happened other than the motions to move all of those cases. So we lost a whole year. 2020 is the fourth year since the revaluation. And um, you know, the, the city spent a lot of money on the revaluation. It was really well done. And um, we have to defend the assessments. And it, it just takes a long time. Okay, just to clarify, you mentioned 600 cases in tax court, so how does it work? So is the, the Middlesex County Tax Board is where the first appeal goes, and then it goes to tax court, or it's two separate kinds of appeals? It's a mix. Okay. Uh, smaller properties can appeal directly to the county board, and if they don't like how it turns out, they can appeal to the tax court. Um, larger commercial properties will typically appeal directly to the tax court. So. Um, to clarify, too, there are about 200 properties that are under appeal, but each one is under appeal for three years, so there's 600 dockets that we're dealing with for about 200 properties. Gotcha. So each year it's a new docket. It's, it's triple the number of properties. Yeah, so gotcha. the, the court does try to consolidate the cases to, to, to make these, the process more efficient. And when we have a trial, it's, it's for all of the others under appeal. To right, all of them. Thank you very much. Um, well, Lance Goldman Spitzer's uh, Resolution 18 on page 4, can you tell me how many bids you got for this? Uh, what, was, what was the bidding process? Um, the chair knows that I know, I, I can't tell you off the top of my head how many bids there were. I know that comes uh, generally with the finance officers and credits here. I know that Ms. James may be able to help. We received three. Oh. Thank you. Um, the, just could I get some details on the MEA contract uh, that's on your agenda tonight? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, ends in 56 on page 5. Just what are the basic uh, changes in it? Are there going to be increases? Mr. Drulis, could you give us a short summary on the changes, please? Sure. The, uh, the MEA contract is presented. It's been uh, approved, approved by the leadership, ratified by the membership, and presented to the council tonight. Um, there is increases for 2019, 2020, 21, and 22 for the length of the contract. There are uh, high, high level differences from the previous year. Uh, health, and, health and prescription falls in line now with the city's health and prescription plan. 
the accumulated six leave cap has been raised to 15,000 from 10,000 for certain employees that qualify. Omnibus operators now can get reimbursed for getting their abstracts once a year. Um, there was an allowance for certain MEA executive board members to be able to participate at member funerals and family members of funerals. And, and lastly, there's a general language cleanup that comes with contracts every four years. Sure. Just what are the increases? Uh, the increases are 1.5 in 2019, 1.5 in 2020, 2% in 2021, and 1.5 in 2022. Okay. Thank you. Um, and if I may, I just wanted to ask, uh, who's, who is Barbara Blackwell replacing on the ethics board? Uh, 73, she's being appointed uh, for the first time. Uh, the Freehold. Freehold, yes. Okay. Thank you. And uh, uh, apparently the city owns the Damon House building. It used to be an armory. And they've been leasing it since the 70s. Uh, can I just get some details on the, the terms of the lease? Uh, how much do they pay for use of it? It's a dollar a year. Oh, okay. That's easy to remember. Uh, and it's another 15 years you're, you're signing on for. 2039 is the expiration. Okay. Um, on uh, the bottom of page 8, there's the... Uh, Community Asset Preservation Corporation is being designated uh, to do something with the abandoned properties. And I just want to understand if this means they're going to be in charge of all of them, or are they just one you know, participant that can be doing uh, these types of rehabilitations? CAPSI, uh, as they're, they're called, will be involved with all of the abandoned properties um, currently. Um, on our list, and it is a, uh, it's a property by property process that, uh, that occurs. Okay, I just didn't see a property listed on this one, so this is. Uh, well, this is all the properties on our abandoned property list would be the properties that would be subject to their redevelopment agreements. Um, and that list has gotten short over the last several months right. because some people have decided to. Take it upon themselves to rehabilitate their own properties, which is a good thing. Okay, and then just to add on the very last resolution, can you just tell me uh, uh, this is a renewal of the, uh, the the same vendor that's been doing these services, and and, and uh, by all accounts they're doing a good job, or have there been any problems? Um, they're doing a good job. Anyone else on the resolutions? Seeing none. Move the resolutions. Second. Council Member Egan. Yes. Council Vice President Sephora Ludwig. Yes. Council President Anderson. Yes. Anything from the uh, council? No, sir. Thank you. No. Okay. We'll go right to uh, public comment. If anybody has any public comment, please, please come up to the microphone. Your name and address for the record. And you're about to five minutes, one time up. And by the way, thank you. I mean, you're welcome for the extra time. Thank you. The extra time. Uh, Charles Crowder, Building Brunswick and Brunswick Today. Before I forget, can you, you just ask the planning director to confirm that he did send out the letter you told me he was going to send this morning regarding the elevator? It's in the mail. Thank you. And I'll be getting it Friday. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, no guarantees. <laughs> well, he said he's going to email it to me Friday. So. I appreciate it. Uh, I do want to uh, uh, apologize for uh, something I said at the last meeting I think was inaccurate. I uh, was uh, very upset about the code blue situation, not being able to help. And uh, you know, I, I, I owe Mr. Jones an apology because I overstated uh, uh, what uh, apparently occurred at uh, meeting last year. Uh, I, I seem to, to think I was publicly shamed by Mr. Jones, but I, I couldn't see it on the video, and I, I don't. I, I uh, can only imagine that uh, you know on that particular night he didn't publicly shame me, and uh, I uh, I overstated it. I, I apologize sincerely uh, for the inaccuracy, um, and uh, just a reminder. But I do make a point of correcting when I get something wrong, and, and if anybody knows something I've said or published that's wrong, I'd like you to tell me so that I can correct the record. Um, but speaking of Code Blue, I, I do think it is still. Uh, you know, despicable that 
uh, the city's not opening the, the warming centers unless it's 20 degrees or colder. Um, we had a day that was 21 degrees it, it hit. Um, and uh, Highland Park opened up their warming center, but New Brunswick didn't. And I, I, I wanted to ask about a, a, a bill. I, I'm not certain that it's passed, but I was told uh, A6056 has passed both houses and is on the governor's desk. And I think that would perhaps require the city to start opening the warming center if it's 32 degrees or below, regardless of precipitation. Can uh, you, you or, or maybe Mr. Jones speak to how that's going to impact the city if that is signed into law and whether or not the, the city supports it and wants to open up the warming center on more nights? Well, if there's a law, then obviously we'll obey it. Well, the current one's not exactly yeah. being no. followed. Uh, no, all I'll say is uh, New Brunswick has always served this population the best we could and we'll continue to do that. Okay, and so if the law is signed, the warming center will be open. 32 degrees, right? Either that or I guess somebody's going to jail. Mm. Well, I certainly don't want anybody to go to jail if we yeah. can help it, but uh, uh, open space tax is, uh, um, uh, do you know the amount of what it's going to be? Uh, one. one cent per $100 of assessed value. Okay, do you remember? Um, you also have a, a an ordinance on tonight for first reading about uh, changes to redevelopment projects and things involving that. Could I get a little insight to what the uh, what the changes are proposed? Sure. Not at this time. But why not? Because I haven't gotten all. You haven't what? I haven't gotten everything needed. What you just adopted? Uh, uh, right, and that's uh, why ordinance. first reading allows you to go to second reading if you want to do it. But in the meantime, you gather all the information to right. see what we have to do. And what does the ordinance say? I don't have a copy of it because it's first reading. So I, presumably you read it before you, you voted. Yeah. Right. So what is what does it say? You have the digest. Okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you play it directly. Maybe. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. Which one did you refer to? It's the last one. Yeah. yeah. The fees for land use procedures? No, the very last ordinance is, uh, says amend and supplement RGO administration personnel city council quote redevelopment project. So, right. this, this just places a, a maximum cap on the fee that can be collected by the city at $100,000. That's what the amendment to the ordinance does. There's a, there's a gradation of, of fees that are paid depending on the project. And this amendment will, will add a uh, maximum redevelopment fee that can't exceed $100,000. And why, why is that? Are uh, the, the, the people doing developments are, you know, well, there's certain part of laws the that impact that. Mr. Dominguez will give you all the nitty gritty details. But go ahead. So uh, a few months ago, we, uh, we modified the redevelopment uh, fee schedule from a sort of awkward tier to a linear formula. Uh, but what we didn't account for at the time was that we, as a city, aren't entitled to profit off of this revenue. And so if we were to have an uncapped, we could have uh, fees that are way in excess of what it actually costs to uh, oversee these projects and manage this. And so to be in compliance, we set a ceiling on this so that we are not exceeding our intake on what we should be taking in. Okay, it's a state law that prevents you from, profit, from, from turning a profit on it. Not for profit organizations, kind of public government can't make money by taxpayers' expense. Only cover the administrative cost expenses, so that's how. Okay, that's understood. Well, well I, I just want to end by, by saying a couple meetings have passed since a man was, was murdered in, in my neighborhood, and I just want to say rest in peace to Cherie Boston, and I think it's important that we, uh, you know, uh, update the residents on things that are that are happening, unfortunate tragedies like this. And so I would hope that in 2020 the police department can uh, do more to uh, bring the council up to speed on things and the public at these meetings. This is a great place to do it. I know it's an unfortunate thing, but getting updates from the police would make sense. Uh, and and uh, I do do. Uh, uh, 
express my condolences to the family and thank you for your time tonight. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, public comments? Anything? Seeing none. Motion to adjourn. Second. Councilmember Egan. Yes. Council Vice President Sophia Ludwig. Yes. Council President Anderson. Yes.